How do you find joy when your heart is breaking? How do you celebrate and sing when there is so much wrong in the world and within you? How do we celebrate the good news of Christmas when his message of a Messiah, a Savior, feels more like a cultural trope than a spiritual truth? Because good news is, after all, the message of Christmas. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. There are a lot of, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> There are a lot of exclamation points in Christmas carols. They proclaimed the good news they anticip that anticipated change has begun. A year ago this last week, we celebrated the good news that the first vaccine against COVID was approved. Remember how that felt? There at the beginning, before anti-vaxxer became a household term, before Delta, Delta and breakthrough cases, before boosters and Omicron, there was simply joy. Getting vaccinated promised hope, it promised change, and in many ways it has brought both. But it feels different now, doesn't it? It feels like maybe we'll, we'll never get back to normal. I look around this sanctuary and I am sad by the change I see. I miss singing together more than I can say. I miss shaking your hand or giving you a hug at the back of the sanctuary in the line. I miss all the people whose faces do not show up online or in person, but whose names and stories I still hold dear. There has been so much loss and grief, has it there? And now it's Christmas again. And the songs are all declaring messages of joy. Not only has joy felt scarcer lately because of the pandemic, it can also be hard to find joy in a Christmas story that proclaims a theology we may no longer believe. But I once did. Wow, Christmas used to be amazing not just because of the presents, which of course they were always pretty great too, because, but because Christmas meant the arrival of God in a human baby, a baby who would grow up to save the world. And who doesn't want someone to save the world when it's hurtling towards destruction? Even at eight years old, I understood that much. You want a good guy to defeat all the bad guys. That's good news. And it comes with cookies, presents, and wonderful music? What's not to like about Christmas? Joy indeed. And while I still love the cookies, presents, and carols, lately I've been wondering what the message of good news for Unitarian Universalists might be. What good news might there be as we live through a pandemic in the shadows of global inequality and climate change? In other words, what news or declaration might change everything for you? What story, what truth might you tell again and again so that life continued to make sense even in the shadows of strife and struggle. In a 27-minute film entitled, My Joy is Heavy! Exclamation point, Abigail and Sean Benson explore this question with heartbreaking honesty. In the film, they use music, 
images, and narration to share their story of three pregnancies, two of which ended in loss. The film depicts the complex entwining of the joys of pregnancy and parenting their son with the heartbreak of pregnancy loss. In one song, they respond together to the news of the third pregnancy singing, so this time I want to be happy, not wanting to wait to be happy. I'd like to be happy. So this time I want it to be different, me too. I don't want to be so afraid. I can't protect myself from the grief anyway. I can't prevent something terrible happening anyway. Just see what happened if I decided to enjoy it and if I decided to love. And then they choose to dance, opening themselves to joy. When the grief does come again, a resolute Abigail looks directly into the camera, declaring, here's what we didn't know. That joy, the joy we made, the joy we grew together, we got to keep it. I have it still. I can call on it right now, and I am. I am calling on it right now. It is heavy, and it is sad, and it is joy. A heaviness of joy and a light kind of grief, and all of it, all of it is love. All three of them I have carried, I've kept the love, and now the joy. It can't be taken away. This is the good news. The love remains. The joy once felt cannot be taken away. And yet the truth of their love and joy cannot be separated from the experience of grief. To open oneself to the joy of love, to the gift of being loved, is to also know loss and its gut-wrenching sadness. It is to know what the Bensons call heavy joy, joy that knows the weight of grief. Heavy joy conveys the truth that life is never a simple story of good guys beating bad guys, right over wrong, goodness over evil. Life is never a straight plot of happiness, of unfettered joy. Rather, life is a complex entwining of love and grief, joy and sadness. But the good news is the joy remains, the love remains. What you have felt cannot be taken away. Perhaps like me, you grew up with a different story of good news. In the story I was given, the heartbreak and the grief of this life was a consequence of sin for disobeying God, a God understood as a divine person. The good news was that God loved us enough to forgive this sin and sent a savior, Jesus, to reconcile sinful humanity to God. If indeed the source of the brokenness in the world is rooted in disobedience to God, this is indeed good news. But what if this depiction of sinful disobedience to the commands of God is not the source of human heartache and brokenness in this world? What if the problem with the world, with humanity, is described differently? Wouldn't the related fix to the problem also be different? In the book, God is Not One, religion scholar Stephen Prothero makes just this argument. For example, in Christianity, the problem is sin, and the solution is salvation. In Islam, the problem is pride, and the solution is submission. In Buddhism, the problem is suffering, and the solution is awakening, 
and so on. The good news of each religion emerges from the depiction of the problem. So what is the problem according to Unitarian Universalism? Of course, it's tricky to say because we do not have a specific canon of, of sacred texts nor a creed of theological beliefs. But perhaps these characteristics are themselves a clue to what we hold central. In resisting the simplicity of dogma, we have left space for complexity and multiplicity. In refusing a, to create a closed canon of sacred texts, we have left open the sources of spiritual and ethical insight. In other words, perhaps part of the problem, according to Unitarian Universalism, is oversimplifying and narrowing the experience of life and the sacred. Could the UU good news be a wide embrace of life in its complexity? Could it be a wide embrace of each of us as individuals and as a messy bunch of humanity? Indeed, we are inheritors of a universalist tradition which preached a love so big that all of humanity was included. And we are inheritors of a Unitarian tradition that declares the light of the sacred in every baby and every person within that wide circle. Together, these two traditions proclaim the good news of a wide embrace rooted in love and sacred dignity. Living within this wide embrace, though, does not exempt us from heartbreak and sorrow. Rather, we come to understand that these two are part of choosing to love. And while losses will break us open, perhaps with the Bensons, we too might learn to sing. No, I'm long past trying to mend this broken heart. I am just trying to hold all the pieces and honor every part of this cracked open holy geode that lives inside of my chest. It is home for a phoenix or for an animal in need of rest. The good news is that we all hold holy geodes inside our chest, places of beauty wrought by choosing love and joy, but cracked open by loss and sorrow. The good news is that we do not need to be perfect and whole to be loved, to know love, to give love. The good news is that feeling broken or experiencing loss does not necessarily mean we have done something wrong, committed a sin, or fallen short. It may simply mean that life is hard and complex and full of heavy joy alongside light grief. This is the truth we might tell again and again. Life and love and joy are big and complex, but they create within and between us experiences that cannot be taken away. Love remains. The joy you have felt remains. So let us open ourselves to joy. Let us choose to be happy. Let us choose to love. Let us share the good news of a love that is wide enough to be complex, big enough to make space for holy brokenness in each of us, and open enough to find joy and wonder again and again and again. So may it be. Amen.